Hey guys, welcome back to the machine shop. My name's Adam, and I'm working on another episode of Saturday Night Special for you. I hope you guys have enjoyed the uh, first couple that I made so far. As I said before, the uh, Saturday Night videos, uh, they're, I'm, they're just going to be kind of like a, maybe a mixture of a couple things that I can come up with to show you. And uh, I've got a couple things in mind to show you today. And uh, we'll just see how they go. You know, uh, like last couple, I had some boxes that uh, that showed up, so uh, maybe we'll just throw those into the video whenever, if, whenever I get those, which uh, I actually did get a box today, and uh, we'll uh, we'll take a look at that, see what I got in the mail, and I've got a couple other things in store for you. I've got a piece of uh, shafting that I'm going to pull out of the, uh, the shelf down here, and uh, another item that I want to uh, pull down and give you a peek at and we'll talk about that. I've got a, a lathe set up that I want to show you. Uh, something I haven't showed you before so we're going to discuss that and uh, we'll just see how it goes. So uh, sit back and enjoy and uh, I hope you like it. So uh, let's get to it. Alright guys I just wanted to point out a couple new additions on the wall as you can see. That's the uh, picture that uh, Tom Zalikman printed out and sent to me and uh, put it in a frame and got it hung up. It looks real nice. And uh, this is also a, uh, a new Starrett chart that my buddy Gil gave me not long ago. And I, I got a frame and got it hung up. So uh, that's making the back wall of the uh, shop look a little nicer back here. So just wanted to point that out. Thanks again, Tom, for the picture, man. It looks great. All right, well, as I said, I got another box in the mail today, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take a look through here and uh, see what I got. This is a uh, this is another box from uh, Tom Lipton at Ox Tool Company, and I haven't been into it yet, but I did went ahead and uh, cut it open. So let's see what uh, let's see what he sent me. So. Uh, Mitchatoya box here. Let's see what you got in here, Tom. <laughs> hey, look at that. A new set of dial calipers. Man, those are great. It says my workshop. And they're nice and plastic, so they won't rust on me. Uh, rack's a little sticky. Hey, we might have to put them to use, Tom. Those are great. They read up to about 160 millimeter, too. I can catch up on my uh, metric readings. <laughs> All right, new set of calipers. Let's see what else you got in here. Oh, I actually asked Tom to uh, build me something, and uh, that's what I was expecting to be in here. Uh, he's got something here that says for Elena, so I don't know what that is. So I will, uh, I will give this to Elena and let her see what Tom sent her. It's a uh, GoPro housing for my GoPro uh, GoPro camera, the replacement housing. So that's cool. Yeah, mine mine is starting to get a little dirty and scrapped up from all the chips. So uh, thank you, Tom. That'll that'll definitely come in handy. And there's another GoPro item in here. A mic adapter. That's something that I hadn't even thought about before is, a, uh, is adding a mic to it. Uh, I know I've had a couple comments about it. Use this mic adapter to connect any external 
three and a half millimeter microphone to your Hero 3 camera. So, I guess Tom's having a little hard time hearing me. He's getting up there in age, you know, and he's, he, uh, I guess he's, uh, he can't hear, hear me very much whenever I'm talking on the camera. So, uh, thank you, Tom. I will put this to use and uh, I will check into getting a, a, uh, a mic. Maybe I can find something that's, uh, maybe they got something that's wireless that I can uh, clip on and, and wear when I'm, when I'm working. I really don't know much about mics, but I'll check into it. So uh, thanks for that adapter there. Appreciate that. All right, we got, uh, we got a nice care package in here. We got a uh, nice fix a thread kit. Seven sixteenths fourteen. Well, I've never used a uh, fix a thread brand before. I've got a, a recoil and a helicoil kit. So, uh, thank you, Tom. I'll put that in the cabinet and. Uh, Maybe one day we'll get to put that to use. So a, uh, a thread repair kit. By the way, if there's, a, uh, if there's an inside joke about this, I'm not getting it yet, so you might have to let me know if you're trying to uh, pull my leg on that. But, you know, I, I have used plenty of these kind of kits before and they, and they work fine, just depending on what you're repairing. All right, let's see. Uh, Got a little block of uh, UHMW. This looks like the stuff that he was machining in one of his other videos recently. So it's always nice to have more material on hand. Thanks, Tom. We've got a uh, Kenamental CNGP 430 insert right there. He's got it. Uh, he's got it taped on. I don't think I've ever used an insert like that. There's that, there's that fancy tape that he always talks about and shows in his videos. All right, that's a nice looking insert. It's got a, uh, it's got a very sharp edge to it, and it's got like a, uh, a positive uh, chip breaker molded into it. So I'll put that to use. We'll try that out and uh, see how it does. It's got like, uh, I mean, the, I don't remember what the radius is on a 430, but it's very, very tiny. It looks like less than 10 thousandths on the, on the edge there. So uh, thank you for the insert, Tom. I will, I'll, as I said, I'll put that to use. I'm gonna put that over there in my uh, cabinet where the other inserts are, and I'll, I'll find me a, uh, one of my little empty packages and I'll, I'll mark it and make sure that I know which one that is. All right. There's one of those little handy dandy screwdrivers that he showed in one of his videos. A pick quick, teeny turner. And it's got a bunch of different inserts on there. That's pretty neat. It looks like one of them six shooters, like in a like in a gun. So that's cool. That will uh, that will come in handy around the shop, also. Thank you, Tom. And there's uh, several different tips there. It looks like we got some Torx. There's a Phillips flathead. Very nice. The teeny Turner. Thanks again, Tom. That's nice. That's a nice addition. And uh, here is the item that I actually uh, asked Tom to make for me since he was he was so good at it, and he's got a nice little bender there that he made. And what these are are the uh, the rods that you put on the milling machine down there. I've got that hole on the side of the quill that you can stick a rod in there. And uh, I asked him if he would make me one of them. And it uh, looks like he's made me three, actually, here. I believe this one's going to be 5 sixteenths. This one's a little bit bigger. 
And I told him mine is a quarter inch. The hole on mine is a quarter inch, and he said that's a little odd. They're usually five sixteenths. So you can uh, stick this up in that hole and tighten it up with that thumb screw. And I've got a snug that I can put on here and actually uh, clamp my uh, my uh, cool mist nozzle to it. And uh, he had he had made one for uh, James Kilroy and sent it to him, and I thought it was really cool, and he did a nice job. So I asked him if he would make me one, and he did. So thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. And uh, I'm going to check the mill at work, the, uh, the Acra, and see if this one right here will fit it. I don't even remember if there's a hole in the side of that one at work, but if there is, I'll, I'll see about putting one of these to use down there also. Uh, I've, I've actually got a bridge port at work also, so I might be able to, to use one of these down there because I've got the same system set up at the, uh, on the bridge port at, at work. So, man, a lot of really nice stuff here. I wasn't expecting all this. So, uh, again, thanks, Tom. You know, I, I consider you a good friend now and a buddy, and, and I appreciate the, uh, the nice stuff that you sent me. And uh, I love being able to talk back and forth with you and joke around and cut up and have a good time. So uh, again, thanks for the care package. It was really nice. And uh, I especially really love the great calipers that you sent me, buddy. The workshop special. I'm going to make sure I put those to use. <laughs> Nothing like a good set of calipers. All right, move on to the next thing. Hey guys, um, Selena here in the machine shop. Uh, got a text today that I had a package from Tom Lipton at Axe Tools, a present for me. So I thought I would uh, let you see what I got here. Let's check it out. Hmm. Wrapped real tight. Use my Zacto knife from Booth Machine Shop. Okay. I think I never opened a present before. I'm not Adam, I don't get them every week for my pens. The <laughs> 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 like, gentleman, my executive producer, is telling me I'm being too quiet. I won't let him be in the video. Alright, got some brown package here. Oh, lunch sack. Oh. Looks like some homemade soaps, Tom. You can smell them, but don't be on camera. They smell good. Very nice. Shh, you can't talk either. Well, that was very sweet of you. I'll use these lovely soaps in my bath. Um, very excited about this. Now I have to find you a prize. So, uh, just wanted to show you, share this with you guys. In the machine shop, put the machine shop. Thanks, Tom. Really appreciate it. All right, so uh, here's the first thing that I wanted to show you guys. This right here is a set of precision rollers made by Anderson Brothers Manufacturing Company. Now, they're actually considered, uh, this one right here is actually considered a balancer or a static balancer. And this is something that you can use that you can manually balance a rotating assembly with. If you got a shaft, you can set a shaft on here. You might have some kind of uh, impeller or uh, hub or fan or something like that. You can put on these rollers and you can spin it. And these are some precision bearings that they, that they mount in here with these rollers and these rollers are ground. And they're very, they're very accurate. They roll nice and smooth, they're just like butter. So that's, uh, that's what these are kind of intended for, but we've never really used them for any kind of balancing. There's been, there's been a couple times that we had to uh, balance something and uh, we used them for that, but usually it was for checking a uh, shaft run out or basically just to check a bent shaft. Anytime you, a customer would bring us in a shaft and uh, they wouldn't know if it was bent or not, we put it up on these rollers and just give it a quick spin and you can tell at first glance that if the shaft is bent or if it's straight. So 
this is a piece of shaft that I that I pulled out of the cabinet or not the cabinet I had down there underneath my workbench and uh, this is what we're going to use as a sample now this is a piece of inch and a quarter Aquatec prop shafting right here and this is a piece that was uh, left over out of our stock you know a shaft that I had to build a while back and this is what was left and this Aquatec stuff is always supposed to be straight as an arrow uh, anytime you build a prop shaft you don't want any warpage to it so we're going to use this as a sample right here and I want to show you what what we uh, use these rollers for so you bring in you know you if you want to check your shaft real quick you set it on these rollers and just give it a quick spin and you can usually just eyeball this and you can tell right off if it's bent or not and just looking at this now you know the surface has got a little bit of just crud on it from sitting around for so long I should have cleaned it off but I didn't I just grabbed it but uh and said so you can take it just give that thing a spin and if I was checking that shaft to see if it was bent or not I'd say this thing is straight now what you can do if you want to check run out to see if you've got a little bit of uh, warpage to it I got my indicator right here and uh, I'll try to get it to where you guys can see it here maybe I'll we'll just stick it right here in the middle usually you want to check the ends but I got the camera set up over there and get the damn thing positioned alright that'll work right there this is just an example I'm just showing you uh, hopefully you can see this you can take that and hopefully you can see the indicator there but it's jumping around anywhere from one to one and a half thousandths that's not bad now at work they actually ordered a set of these probably it's been it's been probably uh, three three and a half years ago they uh, they bought a set of these at work because I brought these in and used them at work because we had some pump shafts that we had to check and this is just a real quick way for a mechanic when he's over there I let my, my uh, co-worker we put it over on his bench and we pulled these pumps apart he took the shaft up here and he checked them to see if there was if there was any kind of run out to them or what and uh, so everybody liked them and they and they we called and as of that time this company Anderson Brothers was still in business and they still build these now they don't have them sitting on the shelf ready to ready to just buy they actually build them whenever you call and you order one they'll build one for you and they've got two versions of it and uh, I don't remember what this particular one is called I'm trying to think it's uh I know it's a, I know it's a uh, static balance uh, check and rollers the ones that we had ordered got them sirens out there again messing me up the uh, the ones that we ordered that they also offer is called true checkers these rollers are supposed to be good within I think two to three thousandths and they've got a true checker which is uh, basically the same thing except they go through a little bit more precision setup and those are supposed to be good to within one and a half thousands and that's the ones that they ordered at work and uh, same size as this and everything and you can set you a shaft up out here and, you know you can put your indicator down here on the end and spin it and you can check the run out but this is what we always used them for as like I said you can you can grab you a shaft off the rack and if you're wondering if it's straight or not put them on these rollers and give it a quick spin and you can see you can look at the ends as that thing's turning and you can see if it's whipping because if you got a bent shaft it'll it'll sit there and it'll do that you know you got a bent shaft 
So this is something that uh, I've been wanting to show you guys for a while. And uh, my buddy Tom Lipton at El Ox Tool, he was asking me about them. Uh, I got to talking to him about these things and uh, he was asking me about them. So I wanted to go ahead and get them down. I I've had them up on my toolbox over there. And uh, I wanted to go ahead and get them down and, and show them to you. And they are adjustable. These are uh, some three quarter rods. And this in here, you know, you got a little set screw that they're held in there. And you can take them and you can pull them out. So you can adjust them, you know, to whatever, whatever width you want. If you need them even longer now, you can make you some new rods to go in here. It's just, I believe that's just three quarter cold roll. And uh, what else was I gonna say? Oh, the, uh, grab my tape measure right here. I believe it'll swing, it was like 20, maybe 24. To the rod there, you got about 10 inch to the, to the center of the roller. So I, I believe it was a 21 inch, that's what it was. It was a uh, 21 inch balancing rollers here. And these are some really old ones. This is something that my granddaddy had acquired for our shop years ago. And uh, we've always had them. And I've, I've actually, I've got a cover that he had built for it too. And uh, you can keep them covered up and keep the dust off of them. Just a really nice item. Uh, every now and then you, you find these things for sale. And if you ever do any, if you ever want to do some uh, quick shaft checking, pick you up a set. They're excellent to have in the shop. So I'm going to move on to the next thing. I'm going to take this uh, piece of shaft here and I want to do a, a lathe setup. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing. What I, what I want to show you is uh, if you'll imagine this shaft being a lot longer, this is the longest piece that I have down here right now. I want to show you if you want to slide something through the headstock and chuck it and do your machine work and you've got all this hanging out here how I support the outer end of the shaft I've got a little thing that I built for the lathe we're going to get it set up and I'm going to show you how I indicate this alright alright guys I'm getting ready to uh, set up the lathe and I'm going to show you what I'm going to use here so I'm going to slide the shaft through the headstock. I'm going to chuck it in a four jaw chuck and indicate on that end. And then I'm going to also indicate it on the outboard end, on the back side of the tailstock. Now, this is a piece that I made a long time ago for the Victor. We're going to use the Victor lathe. And I've just always called it a little spider, but it's just a collar. And I've got some set screws. And what this does, this slides up on the spindle. And I've got me a little Allen wrench that I had to cut off. This is it here. And I can reach up in there and tighten these set screws up on the spindle. Or, you know, tighten this up where it's locked onto the spindle. And then I've got these three bolts here that I made. Just some Allen, Allen head bolts. And I've got three of them in here. And this is what I use to hold the back side of the shaft. I just run the bolts down through there and then I'll set up an indicator and actually indicate this end of the, uh, the headstock also. So I'll have two points on the lathe that's indicated and it'll, it'll make that shaft run just as straight as true as can be. So I'm getting ready to take this over there to the lathe and I'll show you and we're going to get it set up on there. Alright, so this is the back side of the Victor here. Uh, this is usually where my dad's toolbox sits and I've got it moved out of the way and uh, I've got this cabinet here that all my tools and the camera's sitting on and uh, I really wish it wasn't sitting right here but I really had no other place for it whenever I brought it down so I just set it there so I've got to kind of walk around the cabinet to get to this side but all right there's the collar try to get a little light in here and you see there's the back end of the spindle there now I've got it made where it just pushes up on there. Now I just reach up in here with my Allen wrench and uh, 
and get it tightened down. This is a little bit of a aggravation right here, but it works though. And I've just got two of them. And, and it works fine. All, all you're doing is just supporting the shaft. You see there. So I'm going to stick the bolts in there. And what I've got, the, the reason I've got two long ones, I actually had threaded these on up. I've got two long ones. And then I've got another, uh, a shorter one there. Uh, I think I've got, here's another one up here. So basically I had those two that I had, th these three here is what I usually used. And I got the lock nuts, some nuts on there so that once you have it set, you can usually lock the, uh, the nut against the collar. So you've got two of the bolts that's in the same position all the time. And you can usually just loosen up the short one Loosen up one of them, slide your shaft out, slide another one in and tighten it down and you're real close. Uh, I did that because of all of those two inch shafts that we used to slide in here and uh, machine that taper on the end. I mean, it was just hundreds of them back to back. And uh, this, this worked out really well for doing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these installed in here and uh, we'll, we'll get the shaft set up and I'll show you how I get it indicated. All right, getting ready to slide the shaft up through here. I've got my four jaw chuck set. Well, I thought I did. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it started up in there. Kind of do this backwards for you. There we go. That's why I said this cabinet's in the way, so I'm having to go around it. I'm not going to worry about the back end right now. I'm just going to worry about the front end. So, you know, just imagine this is a lot longer prop shaft or something that I'm putting up in here. And uh, we'll just stick it out a little bit like so. Go ahead and tighten down these two. Now, when I was doing all those two-inch shafts, we did use a three-jaw chuck. We didn't use a we didn't use a four-jaw, and that's why I had two of the bolts locked on the spider in the back, so I could just loosen the three-jaw, reach over here, loosen the loosen the one bolt, slide the shaft out, slide another one in, and it kept it really close. It was usually uh, anywhere from five to ten thousandths of run out. All right, let me get my indicator. Get my indicator set up using the Noga. And we're going to go ahead and indicate this in. And then we'll move to the back end. Alright, so I'm about, I don't know, about 25. That's getting us real close there. We're within one. Make sure that they're all tight. All right. We're well within one thousandths on this end right now. So we're going to move to the back end. All right, I'll pick you up so you can see. All right, just spinning it by hand. You can see that it's running out a little bit. The way that the uh, four jaws got it pinched. This four jaw chuck is old. It's uh, the jaws are kind of bell mouthed a bit. This is something that I want to replace real soon. Is get me a new four jaw chuck. But um, this is what I got to work with. So this is what we're going to use. So uh, I'm going to move around to the back side here and uh, get you set up. 
All right. I'm going to go ahead and get this indicated. Um, I got my indicator up here on the headstock. Now this piece is aluminum, so I can't hook it right here. But the top of the uh, the the uh, the top of the headstock is cast iron, so I've got it mounted right over here for now. And uh, I usually just do this by hand. I got it in neutral, and you can see it moves around. So I'm just going to run these up till they just touch. want to just touch them okay so we got three points of contact there and you bring your indicator over kind of running out of room here I think my old indicator holder was a little bit longer than this Noga. So I had a little bit more room here to come on out a little bit further. As long as you don't touch it, it'll be fine there. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see the indicator. And you see I'm running out about 12 thousandths. We'll go ahead and flip this over to make it a little bit easier. And uh, we'll bring you up. All right, there's zero. There's your high. Yep, so we're about 12. So I'll start with the high, you know, but it's in between right there. So what I'll do is I'll take these two and I'm going to snug them up a bit. just keep checking it all right there's a low so I'm going to back off this one and you see I'm getting real close now the highs uh, here maybe a little just a little in between all right it's coming up to that there's a high so I'm going to snug that a little bit more now I'm within one thousandths it's almost to this one so I'm going to snug that one again just a touch and I'm trying not to pull on it as I'm doing this. I'm just trying to spin it. You can just reach up here and do the bolts also. So, all right, there's there's a high point here. All right, I'm within a half a thousandth right there. So I'm going to go back to the four jaw and I'm going to check that in one more time. All right, now we're back on the four jaw and I'm checking it. And I'm one and a half thousandths out. Won't take much. All right, that's pretty damn close right there. You can actually see the, uh, you can see that needle wiggling just a, just a touch. But I'm going to call that true. All right, so now I've got a shaft set up. Between two points of contact, I got my four jaw chuck and then the spider on the back end there. And that thing is running nice and straight. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put it in 600 and we're going to spin it up. You see the back end there? Running nice and straight. Uh, that damn light's probably giving you a glare. And that helps tremendously when you've got a long shaft coming through your headstock that you're wanting to machine. It keeps that back end from whipping around. You can run some higher RPMs. You don't have to worry about it whipping, and it just works really good. So, this is this is something here that I that I've done a lot. I've done a lot of indicating on both ends of this, 
And something that I can't show you that I don't have set up here is way on back further down at the old shop I had a pedestal that I that I had fabricated that I could bolt to the floor and I used one of the steady rest off the lay that it was a roller steady rest and I could set that thing up to hold the the outer end of the shaft down there so I would indicate it here I would use the collar on the back of the lathe here to indicate it here and then I would have the steady rest way back there holding the back end of the shaft and that always worked extremely well and you could very easily spin it up like this is you know this is 600 rpm here and uh, this right here is 700 and we could spin those shafts up when we wanted to try to do some you know intricate machine work and it would just run nice nice and straight and you didn't have to worry about the shaft whipping on you So, I, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is, this is what I wanted to show you. And uh, I, believe I, I believe I accomplished my mission here and, uh, and showing you how, how my little setup was. I'll show you one more time. The back end, the little collar set up. Not all lays you can do this to because sometimes the, uh, the back of the spindle is actually up inside this housing a little bit further and it's hard to reach but this worked out good it was just far enough that I could make this collar and it worked and I did this on this lathe the Victor and our and our uh, ACK return lathe I had it on that also and uh, we've done some big long heavy shafts by supporting it just like this